Yeah, listen, I, I think the three teams deserve huge credit. You know, some, on any other season, you'd be promoted now with, with you know, what have we got now? Have we got 80, 87, 87, 87 yeah. points? Bolton got promoted with 86 last year, so any other season with fa with four games to go now, we'd be we'd be getting promoted, as would Shrewsbury, as would Wigan. So it's the Battle of the BRFCs, part two, with Bennett up against Bennett. Obviously, ends in a draw, right? Start of the Blackburn Rovers, bottle job. <laughs> Not on my watch. That's right, folks, back once again with another match review, this time picking apart the battle of the BRFC's Bristol Rovers versus Blackburn Rovers at Memorial Stadium. And we're about 30 seconds out, just 30 seconds out from a, from a valuable three points that would have probably given us one foot in the championship, but no. Up steps a guy by the name of Lines in the fourth minute of injury time to salvage a point for pretty much a, a, a team that's got nothing to go for itself. They're stuck in the middle of the table in the 11th spot, but credit where credit is due for Bristol Rovers, they did give us a right good old game uh, in a 1-1 draw at Memorial Stadium. Anyway, before I get into the thick of things, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to bang up today with all things Blackburn Rovers. And boy, it's the time to subscribe now because it's going to get really nasty and really dirty and very twitchy bum time because who knows? Are we actually going to do this? Are we actually? Is it the start of a bottle job? Um, I don't think so. I just think it's it is nerves. Wigan did the same today. They also failed to win. Shrewsbury failed to win against Bradford City. So teams are dropping points, and we are just the latest to do so. Anyway, let's talk about, about the match in a little bit more detail. Charlie Mulgrew opened up the score on the 65th minute with what looked like a winning penalty, and that moment for me. Oh my goodness! I was it was huge relief. I thought yes, we're going to hold out now, and it looked like it looked decent. I thought we were. The defence was the only good point of this game. We lacked creativity throughout the team. Obviously, Bradley Dack does not look like the player he was five or six games ago. It's completely different now. I don't know what's going on. Uh, maybe he's hit, he's hit a brick wall, or maybe they've all hit a brick wall. And somebody has said in the comments, you'll see it later on, what happens if we do end up in the playoffs in this kind of form? It's, it's, a, it's a thought that I don't really want to think about. Anyway, let's take a look at it a little bit more detail. The BBC says Rovers had 58% possession compared to 42 for Bristol Rovers. As for shots, Bristol Rovers had 14, Rovers had 13. As for shots on target, Rovers had four, Bristol Rovers had two. I'm confusing with the Rovers and the Bristol Rovers. Uh, corners, we had seven compared to Bristol Rovers four, and we both had nine fouls. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. First and foremost, the hosts, Bristol Rovers. Slocum in goal, Jay Clark, Lockyer, Craig, Brown, O'Clark, Lines, the goal scorer, Broadbent, Bennett, Moore, and Harrison. And that's right, Bennett is the brother of Elliot Bennett. And uh, so they, they did, this is obviously the second time that they've met this season. Obviously, we came out with a victory the last time that, that these two sides. Anyway, let's take a look at the Rovers starting 11. First and foremost, in goal, Raya, Bennett, Lennon, Mulgrew, Williams, Evans, Dax, Smallwood, Armstrong, Graham, and Conway. Let's take a look at my match ratings for the players. Raya had a 7, Ben had a 6, Lennon had a 7, Mulgrew had a 7, Williams had a 6, Evans had a 5, Dak had a 5, Smallwood had a 7, uh, Armstrong had a 6, Graham had a 7, and Conway had a 5. Yes, it was... Like I said, a, a defensive a defensive uh, a performance by Rovers. Uh, obviously, Lenehan looks solid at the back. And even at, at halftime, we're here to switch to right back. And Benner got pushed further forward um, due to a uh, substitute in Evans. I think he might have picked up an injury. Uh, Downing did come on. But Dak, probably his worst performance in a Rovers shirt in my... Well, it's, it's up there. This past three games, it's up there. And he just does not look like the player he was... A few games ago where he was creating goals, scoring goals. I don't know. There's, there's, there's something a bit off at the moment. So hopefully, again, there's a couple more days uh, rest for the players. And then they bring it back to Ewa Park to take on Peterborough under the Sky Cameras Thursday night. Which, if we win that game, obviously, there's a game between that. There's a couple of games, actually. Wigan are in action. And also, um, Shrewsbury are back in action up against Charlton. Which is not an easy game itself. Charlton is still sniffing for playoffs. Um, they were not in action today. So, I'm hoping uh, Lee Bowyer does us a solid and uh, gets a win or, or, or a cheeky point off of, off of Shrewsbury. Anyway, the match was pretty as one of those games. It just, it just it didn't feel like we were going to get a goal when we did get a goal. It was a massive, huge sigh of relief 
from from me myself and I'm sure from all the other Rovers fans around the world I thought that we did it we thought that we did enough to get the three points and that would have it would have probably done it it probably would have knocked the wheels completely off of Shrewsbury the morale would have gone and they probably would have lost against Charlton but now they're going to have their tails up and they're going to give us a right good go to be honest with you both promotion spots are still up for grabs Wigan you know, they might have a game in hand on us, and if they win that, they would be three points clear plus goal difference. So they might be thinking they've done enough, but it's not all it's not all sorted yet. There are four games uh, for us left, five games for them. Um, so let's just see how how they pan out, and especially we'll probably have a better indication of where we are come Thursday night after the game against Peterborough. Now you've got a little bit of what I have to say about the match. What did the gaff have to say shortly after the final whistle? against Bristol Rovers. I feel all right, another point in the bag for us. Um, pushing on, 31 defeat in 31 games. Um, I think the team showed their desire and um, their levels that they can play at to try and get a result. I think the disappointment is that we didn't finish the game off. The team's always going to get a chance. I just looked at the stats there, they had two shots on target today. They scored right at the death in the 95th minute to, uh, to equalise and it's great credit to them that they kept going. Um, for us, disappointing, but we move on to the next game. I'm pretty sure if we'd have cleared the box, we'd have got the win. I think he was ready to blow his whistle. We did win the first header that came in. We just uh, just felt that the boy on the edge of the box who smashed it in. And you know, I'm not sure they scored too many more like that. But credit to them, they kept going. Um, they're a good side. They've got some good players. They work extremely hard for each other. And it's sometimes that's not easy to do when there's not a lot at stake for them. But um, credit to them. I'd have to say credit to the people of Bristol who support this team and create an atmosphere in this stadium that uh, that drives their side on. No, well, I think that's a disappointment, of course, because you know that teams are going to put you under pressure at 1-0 or 2-1, you know, wherever it is, one goal in it, especially away from home. Teams are going to come for you and they're going to gamble and they're going to play man for man at the back and they're going to put it in your box and they're going to get second balls and the crowd are going to lift them and that's football and, uh, and what you need to do in them situations is when they do leave 2v2 at the back and you break away with the extra midfield play and you're playing 3v2 on the break, you have to pick the right pass, stick it in their net and the crowd go quiet, the half of them go home and the team lose a bit of faith but um, we didn't quite manage to do that um, and suffered the consequences at the death. Just really tight hamstrings I think as I said there, it's, we've tried not to make a thing of it but we had Huge travel problems this week. I'd have to say, you know, I didn't get home personally till half past five in the morning on Wednesday morning after coming back from Gillingham, and I know a lot of the players were the same as me. Um, and then we had to sit on the bus for five hours coming here today. It's, it's not, whatever you think. It, it, it's, it, you don't want to make excuses for fatigue in the game because I think they showed that they managed and coped well. But I think when your hamstrings are tight, it's really uh, the um, the result of sitting around waiting about. Um, sitting in the same position, you know, and um, it's a shame because Corey's been probably one of our best players over the last month or so. He's done exceptionally well. It's a pitch is fine. I think groundsman deserves a lot of credit. As I said the people of Bristol deserve a lot of credit that uh, you know they support their team in, in big numbers, and um, it was a great effort for us to um, to control the game for long spells. First half, it's just that one nil is always an edgy score. And as I said, we really need to score that second to. to to kill the drive of the fans and the team to try and get back into it, and we didn't quite manage to do that. And uh, that's football. I know it's, um, it's not an easy place to come. As, as Wigan is their next opponents here, they'll, um, you know, I'm sure they'll find it difficult as well. But um, no. yeah, we just keep going. Yeah, listen, I think the three teams deserve huge credit. You know, on any other season, you'd be promoted now. With, with you know, what have we got now? Have we got 80, 87, 87, 87 yeah. points? Bolton got promoted with eighty six last year. So, any other season, with fa with four games to go now, we'd be we'd be getting promoted. As would Shrewsbury, as would Wigan, and yet um, that's a great credit to all three clubs uh, within the really really difficult league to um, to accrue that many points. It's going to go down to the wire. We have to believe and keep going with the support base that we've got that travels away like it does again today. And, and at home, we have to believe we can win football matches. And, and again, I'll go back to that stat really of one defeat in 31 games. We take the belief of going into the last few games, who's going to beat us? They have to be some team to beat us, and, um, and we have to keep believing and keep going. Now, you've heard a little bit of what the gaffers had to say about the match. What did the fans say on social media? Let's take a look. Northern Rover on Twitter said this I can understand people being disappointed, 
but if nonsensical to say Mowbray is a failure. The guy took over when we had lost all hope, nearly pulled off the impossible to keep us up, and this year he has restored the pride and got us into top two. Meanwhile, Rovers Chat said this, Bradley Dak off the boil again, just couldn't get into the game. Not sure what's up with him, but he struggled for the last couple of games. Talk of Ewood, how disappointing is that? Wouldn't go as far as calling it bottling though. Good goal to equalise, just a, a sticky spell. Got to say, those last two fixtures always look tough. It's sure to be exciting. Let's have it, he says. Hashtag Rovers. Chris Tomlin said this. Gutted. Such a shame with Wigan looking like they'll drop points. Probably consigns us to second now. Meanwhile, celebrity Rovers fan Foggy said this. Carl Fogarty, bollocks. And he put a little red, uh, angry face. Meanwhile, CJ Wizard 3318 said this. Blackburn are still in a promotion place. Back the team instead of slating them. They are doing a fantastic job. Meanwhile, Amy Lomax said this. Tense last three minutes. Absolutely heartbreaking to concede just before the whistle as the play and formation was spot on. On to the next. Joe Cullen says this. Haven't been good enough last few games. Good opportunity to give ourselves big shot promotion. Lost today. Meanwhile, over the BRFCS forum, if you've not checked out the forum, make sure you do so. It's a great opportunity for you to chat with fellow Rovers, maybe even argue with fellow Rovers, just like this guy, Tom Phil. So annoying, but it's so, so predictable. Why the hell can't we go after teams from the off with the bundles of quality we have, I don't know. The team's bound to go in its shell. The tactics reflect that. We simply can't go to places to draw or pinch a result. We are at our best playing it to our attacking strengths. What in God's name is he so scared of? Meanwhile, Fraser Kirky said this. It was better than Tuesday. That's the only good part. That and Wigan failed to win at home. Gut-wrenching goal. I agree with the lad that said we looked. We don't look like scoring from open play. I thought Lenahan was terrific today. Still five points ahead. Really six with the 17 plus goal difference. Meanwhile, Gavilar Somerset Rover said this, simply have to beat Peterborough on Thursday. They lost at home to Rochdale today, 1-0, even though the opposition had 10 men for most of the second half. No more excuses, and time we took care of our own business rather than relying on others. Solid point there. Meanwhile, DE, we haven't played well in a long time now. We don't want to go into the playoffs on this form. Exactly what I said earlier. Uh, Angry Pirate said this, in the 13 months Tony Murray has been charged, have we ever not gone all out defensive from 60-65 minute mark with a one goal lead? How many points has Williams cost us this season from the inside of the opposition six yard box and closer? If he could score absolute sitters, he would be our third top scorer, not even exaggerating. Can't help but feel he is the only player because he has this every minute of every game streak going. Wigan drawing makes this feel even worse. Blue Fred said this, never mind, it could have been worse. Mowbray now needs to drum into them the importance of Thursday's game. Simon Garner's 194. Football frustration and it's injury time worse. Not a disaster, but worrying that we are not. We are looking tired, uh, that we are looking at a tired side. I'm looking like a tired side, I can't read. Uh, Cherry Blue, this season's draws could be our failing this season. With the squad we have, we should be going out and finishing games off in early. Instead, we have Tony Mowbray's negative approach resulting in trying to hang on and then blowing it. Okay, some may say we are still in with a shout, but if we don't win on Thursday, yeah, it does leave a big, big uh, question mark. The big picture seems all three teams are struggling at the minute. Even in Division 3, the pressure is giving everyone a wobble. If we can beat Peterborough next Thursday, that may be enough. Wins were the norm until recently. Suddenly a win is massive in this run-in. Still gutted an hour later, felt... We were seconds from promotion. Alan Kay. That was tough to take. The lads do look tired, but what? But that was a seriously heavy pitch. We played better when we switched to 3-5-2, but that miss by Williams was costly. Still in our hands, but must do better. Meanwhile, DE back again. We needed a second goal today and just couldn't get it. On the plus side, it doesn't sound like Gillingham, like the Gillingham match at least. We seem to have created chances today. We just didn't take them. Uh, even our goal was a penalty. We are heavily reliant on Dak and Graham. So when they aren't scoring, we're playing or we're praying for Mulgrew free kick or penalty. Not ideal. Still, we've gotten this far. We should still have enough. We also aren't losing. And in the end, only dropping two points as opposed to three may be the difference. Now, let's take a look at around the grounds, obviously. On Thursday, Shrewsbury were down. Well, they, they, lost, they lost a man, but they didn't lose. They, kept, they uh, picked up a, a valuable point for them, I guess, against uh, Bradford City at Valley Parade. Meanwhile, on to Saturday's fixtures. Wigan were held by Rotherham at home, 0-0. Uh, GB's Blackpool, uh, I think they were 1-0 down against Fleetwood, and they managed to pull it back 
two one to uh, win, and that's probably pushed us pushed them into the top ten. Meanwhile, at the bottom of the table, FC Wimbledon picked up a massive, valuable victory over also fellow strugglers Walsall. Who else? Berry are now relegated. Three two win for Northampton seals their fate, and they are doomed to League Two. Uh, who else? MK Dons lost to Doncaster and Gillingham were held to one more draw at Oldham. Meanwhile, the Coastal Derby, I guess, Plymouth, Argyle and Portsmouth held to a nil-nil draw. That's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. Yes, it's been pretty annoying that we only managed to pick up a stinking point. But is it a bottle job? No, it's not. We're going to get back to it and we're going to get back to it on Thursday. If you want a little bit more about that match against Peterborough, come right back here as I'll build up to the game uh, probably Monday. So check back then. If you are new to the channel or in fact, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. But also, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with everything Blackburn Rovers related. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook. Yes, it is. It's very frustrating being a Rovers fan right, right now, but it's so close. Four games left. Four games left. And if we can pick up a win on Thursday, then I think I think we'll just about do it. We'll just about do it. Obviously, I want to get this done early as possible because my heart cannot take it. Even when we got that 1-0 lead today, I was I was on the floor in uh, in an emotional sort of condition. Uh, I can't take it much longer, so we need to get this done. And hopefully, hopefully, Lee Bowyer will have his, uh, have his football manager cap on and he'll manage to conjure up something because Charlton did lose uh, today against Scunthorpe, but Scunthorpe were a tough side as well. So hopefully he can do us a solid um, and then that will give us the, the platform to get a result on Thursday. But anyway, a lot can happen before and after that. So anyway, until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe.